hello, good morning, etc. Hello. <laughs> Uh, welcome to Salty Sweet Games, everybody. Welcome to Masks of Nyarlathotep, a Pulp Cthulhu campaign. I am the aforementioned Salty. And I'm Sweet. And these uh, various assorted spices are our friends. Now, before we go around and meet everyone and their characters, we have some brief channel shout outs and things to do so you know what's going on, especially if you're new here. If you are, hi, hello, welcome. Firstly, a ton of thanks to our sponsors. The first being Roll20, our virtual tabletop of choice, which unites gamers across any distance with easy to use tools that run straight from your web browser for free. It's exciting, right? Um, we are part of their spotlight program, which highlights indie TTRPG creators all across the interwebs. Roll20Con is coming up October 23rd through 25th. Uh, it's going to be very exciting, lots of things like they're going to be Burn Bright demos run by some of the Spotlight folks and some other people who uh, have partnered with Roll20. There's going to be panels and there's going to be games. It's going to be a good, good time. So make sure you go and uh, find the information over on Roll20.net. It's there down at the bottom in their blog posts. Also, for those of you who like dice, and thank you to whoever ordered last time. I love when people actually order from Dice Envy. Um, we are part of their affiliate program. So basically, if you go to their website and use our code SALTYSWEET, all caps, one word, you get 10% off your order. They're coming up with new stuff like every week and they're shipping out really fast, safely during all this. It's pretty awesome. Let's see. Yeah, they've got like two new sets out recently, uh, yes. including a uh, cantrip, which is like this uh, transparent acrylic with pink uh, sparkles inside of it. Yeah. Uh, and also Dice Goblin King, uh, which is uh, they're a regular set of acrylics again, which is kind of like this uh, rose gold color mm -hmm. um, and uh, includes an extra chunky D20. Uh, so if you like your big boys, you get a full set and then an extra one. So it's real awesome. That's good shit good shit uh who else of course i just had it in my hand grinding coffee co uh they are a black and lgbt plus owned company their brews are all organic uh and pros uh portions of their proceeds go to charity you can go to their website use the code salty sweet games all caps one word get 13 percent off your order they have sub-based things some of our friends are starting to try them uh i'm obsessed but i am also obsessed with coffee in general uh, I recommend Peru because it reminds me of this campaign and where it all started many moons ago. Like almost seven months ago? That's creepy. Uh -huh. I don't like that. You're not, you're like not halfway through it yet. <laughs> Cheers. I mean, unless you all die. If you all die, I guess we can quit. So, you know, well, when weigh, you, weigh your options. When you pitched this game to us, though, you were like, we're going to go until we go, <laughs> until go we're until done. We go. We're gonna so, go until we go. It's okay? a 666 page long book, and it's not like, oh, we spread it out. It's like it's all really tightly packed, so they could hit that that sweet, sweet number. Yeah. Um Okay. Of course, there are donation options down below. If you would like to help out the players, because they're all helpful. Because <laughs> I'm not that evil. <laughs> so they're very nice. There you can give somebody an advantage which could literally save their life. Uh, you can give somebody a role in the Eldritch gift table, which uh, did literally save somebody's life. Uh, or you can restore sanity or grant somebody some temp HP. Good. Do that if you so choose. All that goes to help with channel upkeep, uh, future projects like our very exciting podcast that we're working on with On the Table. And of course, our cast compensation. So, the last thing before we just get on the road. Uh, we here at Salty Sweet Games use safety tools, lines, veils, X and O cards, stars and wishes, and content warnings because while the characters may be uh, put through some real interesting stuff today, depending on what they do, uh, the players are here to have fun and they're our priority always. And you should know what's happening too. See if this is your kind of thing. We want you to be safe as well. Without further ado, 
Let's talk to our players real quick. Kiana, who are you? We know who you are. Who are you playing now? <laughs> I am playing Irene Blackwell, who's a she, they, she, her pronouns, I use a she, they. Um, she is a resident forger, a resident artist, uh, and has just had a conversation with another artist that was kind of concerning. Uh, mm. <laughs> so, yeah, no. Uh, she's also a bit of a softie, so, mm. you yeah, know. Sure. Also that. Yeah. Uh, is sure. it going to get her in trouble? Probably. Probably. It's fine. <laughs> I'm worried about it. Uh, let's hop up to Allison. Hi, Allie. Oh, I'm next. Hey. Good morning, everybody. It's Allison. I play Ganymede Graves, adventure scientist, she, her pronouns, please, who did not make the mistake of leaving her weapon of choice at home this hey. time around. I'm very proud of you, dear. That, um... I'm so happy. I mean, it is a large shotgun with an axe on one end, so it would make as much sense for you to leave it home as anything. Uh, let's hop over to Summer, who needs to get that emote off her screen. It's not on the fucking it overlay, <laughs> that's Lauren. Just, that's from me to you. Get that away. It goes away on its own. I didn't. What the there fuck are is emotes that? In Zoom. <laughs> now it's an exciting are. time i can't wait to use those to express um myself there's no crying one what the fuck okay. who are you who are you playing? or angry one hi <laughs> i'm what's up it's me summer mm -hmm. you know me you love me yep i play oh i have i use she her pronouns and i am playing one Mr. Charlie Rapp who uses he him pronouns and Charlie's never done anything wrong in his life. Great. Cool. That's and he's rich. <laughs> wonderful. So I guess that's one strike against him. Bro, I was but... about to say you're really endearing yourself. <laughs> um yeah, and I just would like to say the last thing I wrote in my notes is he come back when he's asleep. Who's he? Mm, who is question. he? Uh, speaking of he, I'm not skipping Tommy this week. Hi, Tommy. Hi, yes, hello. He he is not being skipped, I guess. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, hello, I'm Tommy. Uh, I am indeed a he. Um, and uh, I play Zebulon Augustine Claiborne Montgomery III, also a he. Um, uh, and... Uh, he doesn't really, he's just kind of here. <laughs> this is just kind of, this is weird. This place is weird. These people are weird. Uh, England's weird, in his yeah. opinion. <laughs> England, honestly, out of all the countries he's been to with uh, Ganymede, England's been the weirdest for him, I feel like. <laughs> I feel like it's been the weirdest, just people-wise. Just, it, it, just weirder. Just, it's weird. <laughs> goals left and right. So many goals. All right. Uh, well, that's great. And finally, let's go over to our special guest, Billy. Hi, Billy. Hello. <laughs> um, I am I am a guest, uh, but I am thrilled, even for a short amount of times, to play with these awesome people. Uh, I am Bill or Billy, whatever. Uh, I don't care. Uh, I am a he him, and I'm playing Mickey Mahoney, who is also uses he him pronouns um uh yeah so it's been it's been a it's a lot of chaos uh which is par for the course for mickey and i'm excited to see where today's gonna go excellent i'm sure it'll be fine okay we're gonna do a recap lightning fast i wrote it this time so last time the investigators still reeling from their experience in lesser edale reconvened at Oxford, where they completed some research and made their goodbyes before heading into London, aka the modern Babylon, and the Ritz Hotel. There they were accosted by a strange, potentially high man named Mickey Mahoney, the editor of The Scoop and friend to both Rebecca Schosenberg and the late great Jackson Elias. He had a delivery for Irene, a key Jackson left to her, and he happened to know the address of Miles Shipley, the artist of the so-called crazed canvases. The group headed to Chelsea and knocked on his door. 
An old woman, Shipley's mother Bertha, answered, and Charlie said they were there to buy some of Miles' paintings. After introductions were made, most of the group headed up to the garret room to view the paintings, which were horrid, strange things. Charlie bought all three for way too much money. Meanwhile, Irene followed Shipley to his room to see a work in progress, one that depicted cultists similar to those they encountered in New York. While she was examining it, Miles locked the door behind them and asked Irene to help him get out that he was under duress from and feared him. So, the first thing that I need is a stealth check from Mr. Mahoney, who may have told me that he wanted to go somewhere last week. Yes. Mr. Mahoney, oh. where are you going? <laughs> Disney Mahoney? World. What the fuck? Oh my god! What? Hey, Tommy, look. Look at that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> is, is that is that is that all HTML? Okay. No, no, I'm... it's not. It's not. It's oh. great. It's a hard success. It's beautiful. You got, yeah. a, you got a six. Yeah. yeah well, it looks Your like HTML. Is terrible. Me. Well, it it looks great on our end. It looks great for okay, us. Okay, cool. this is this it's, is great. It's good enough. <laughs> it's good enough. This is great. I mean, just over here eating his breakfast, trying to <laughs> trying to mind his own business. You know, roll twenty. You know, you you sent that post with roll 20's distribution. Yeah. Like that's the thing. That's distribution across all games. I'm pretty sure if you look at my distribution, <laughs> it goes something like like. Let's see, if this is one and this is 10, and it goes like this. <laughs> it just goes down. <laughs> oh, all right, so Mickey Mahoney, none of you know where he is. You did not see him leave the Garrett room. And he, that's how he moves, I think. Yeah, which surprisingly draws no one's attention. <laughs> <laughs> you are all busy. Charlie, We're all trying not to Charlie look at that. Charlie was a little insane, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I didn't like the paintings, but I loved the paintings. Exactly. Okay, so yeah, I'm a. I, we've just made a deal. Yes, you've, you've um, shaken so I, on it. Yes, we have. So I'm assuming that me and what was her name, Bertha? Bertha. Wow, I'm assuming that me and Bertha are going through details of like mm -hmm. shipping packaging that kind of right. thing um she'll ask you oh uh, what did i do oh old lady right yeah it's uh, just an old lady voice mr <laughs> rap uh would you uh, like to uh we have some formal papers that you can sign uh, we're quite used to this <laughs> nowadays although uh it's been a a fair bit with uh, between works, um, but would you like to come downstairs? I'll make some tea, get the papers, and you can start filling them out. Absolutely, uh, whatever your usual procedure is, I'm happy to follow. Excellent. If uh, the rest of you um, are welcome to wait in the sitting room, or if you'd like to l look at the the paintings more, that would be fine. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stick with Mr. Rap here. All right, dear. I, I, I think I'd like to sit down, please, if that's all right. Of course, of course. Kenny means a head aches a little bit from, from the sanity loss. Mm. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, she will begin leading you downstairs mm -hmm. but uh before we get there mickey uh the room that you are outside of is right at the bottom of the stairs so i would like to know what you're doing um so i, I feel like i rolled perception last week to hear what was going on you and did. missed you did. And, I, and i couldn't so when he, he's trying to struggle and he's going to focus all of his efforts to lean up against the wall like a uh, adjacent uh, perpendicular to the to the door and then as he's kind of like leaning up against the wall his eyes are going to just roll back into the head and he's going to fall asleep 
<laughs> and Charlie, Irene, no, Charlie, Zebulon, uh, Ganymede, and Bertha Wingu uh, walk down the stairs. Mickey's there leaning against a door, sleeping. Like there standing up. <laughs> Just... Yeah. <laughs> I think none of us had even mentioned that he wasn't here and yeah, Charlie just goes up. Oh, found him. <laughs> oh dear, uh, Mr. Mahoney. Uh, sh wait, should we leave him? Yeah, I would just leave him there. Mm. I mean, he seems comfortable. Good. Um, <laughs> she kind of steps a little closer. Uh, Miles. Miles. And she kind of weakly knocks at the door, obviously not wanting to wake Mickey up. And inside, um, inside Irene, Miles' eyes, um, like, it, it was like he hadn't really been listening to anything else. And he just kind of shakes his head and... Uh, Don't, um, can you keep what we were uh, talking about just between us? P perhaps we could talk uh, some more if you could just, um, just tell her everything's fine. Right, uh, and, and I think she, she's whispering at this point. Um, and she puts up her, her hands to kind of show ten fingers as if to, like, say, at ten o'clock tonight, mm -hmm. she'll come back. She doesn't want to say it out loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then she'll just kind of... Yeah. Oh, uh, everything all right? <laughs> uh, Miles, uh gets back to uh, kind of working on this piece. And if you go over to the door, um, which I assume you will, are you opening the door? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to, cool. to the door. Cool, <laughs> Mickey falls into the room. Just <laughs> probably on Irene. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> oh, oh, oh dear. Uh, does Mickey wake up? Um, let's roll. Let's yeah, roll sure. something to see if he wakes up. Uh, We're... Let's do, let's do con because it's I, funny. I have concerns. <laughs> um. I can't see the numbers, so you it's, get to it's, interpret a, it's that. It's a fail, <laughs> it's a fail. Um, I didn't really think about which result would be a success and which would be a failure. Let's. I feel, I feel like, it, cause he would, enduring in his sleep state, taking damage uh, la, uh he would keep his sleep state by succeeding on the con. okay great so uh as you slam into the floor your eyes burst open and it's like his, his he takes this huge gulp of air like he has been not breathing for the last couple of minutes <gasps> <gasps> oh nightmares uh, uh, are you all right uh mr mahoney <sighs> The answer is no, but we will carry on. Uh, did, uh, right, uh, and, and I mean, it's kind of during the, uh, God, and she, she's leaning down as if to help you up. She's flustered. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in here? What's this? He's going to take a, a look around the room that he wasn't yeah. in before. I want, yeah. I want Mickey in particular to make a spot hidden. Nice. That's a that's a nice sixty nine success. Um, Mickey. Um, as Irene helps you up, um, Miles also he he puts down what he's doing and comes to help you. And what you see, um, with your particular experience is that uh, his sleeves are rolled up and he has uh, signs of needles having been used, like injection points in his arm. Um, he's, he's going to keep that information to himself and not be loud and chaotic about it, but mm -hmm. his objective would be to, uh, 
engage in conversation with him in a more private level mm. and <laughs> navigating the social situation to try to make that happen without being too blunt. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, yeah, let's see how you do that. Bertha will try and, oh, oh I think we've disturbed Miles's workspace quite enough. Uh, I, I quite like this here. Um, do you mind if I just stay here for a moment and uh, absorb the energy of the room? <laughs> what is the how she reacts? Let's do um. Roll a bullshit check. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll take persuade. Or okay. I would also take charm for this, just because of Mickey. I feel like Mickey deserves a special skill that's like just weird Shit. or eccentric. Wow. Wow. I can't see him, so it's you. It's just, you were right <laughs> on the money. Forty uh, versus forty. Um. And uh, Bertha at first looks definitely a little reticent, but um, she kind of uh, looks at you again, and there's a bit of a of a crooked smile. All right, Mr. Mahoney, you were very uh, good to write that article about dear Miles' work, so um, <laughs> go right ahead. Excellent. Um, I know you then... artists work in mysterious ways. <laughs> I'm, I'm just an artist with with words, I suppose. Uh, but they have a different title for that, and that's uh, editor. <laughs> Quite. Well, uh, come with me, everyone else. I go with Bertha. Okay. My new love. I too go with Bertha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Ganymede. Ganymede does as well with sort of a. But as she follows, she kind of casts a look back at at the room and at Mickey, but but only for a brief second, and then yeah. follows along. Yeah, okay. and I, I think Irene's the one to close the door, uh, and she kind of looks over to to Miles uh, for a moment before closing it. Okay, so Mickey is in the room with Miles, who has moved moved away after setting you right and has gone back to his painting. Uh, downstairs, as the party goes, uh, Bertha opens the door to a reception room, which has two couches and two uh, comfy chairs, and she gestures. Um, I, let's see, where did I leave that? Oh, yes, in the kitchen. Uh, Mr. Rapp, would you like to uh, help me set out the tea? You look like like you could uh, use some a little um yes I, I don't mind at all and Charlie will go the tea sounds great right now right my it's brain totally. is just a little bit sad and or scared of paintings sure <laughs> yeah so I'll go with her great uh so in the reception room we have Zeb, Irene and Ganymede Charlie is with Bertha in the kitchen, and Mickey is in the upstairs bedroom with Miles. Let's go upstairs. Yeah, so Miles is working on this painting, which uh, now you see, as described before, this huge uh, creature on top of a towering mountain. Like this thing is bigger than the mountain it's depicting. And its head, instead of what you would expect, is a, a large monstrous uh, tentacle swathed in blood. There's a temple and there are a bunch of figures lifting their hands toward the sky in supplication to whatever this entity is. Um, Mickey's going to pull out his pipe, um, dig around in his pockets, pull out some, it looks like a dried, light greenish, slightly furry substance, put it in his pipe, 
stamp it down, offer it uh, in addition to a match to Miles. Rifa, my friend? And I think uh, you see now um, probably what you saw before is that he's um, very jittery, twitchy man. Um, but he, he, he reaches out for it. Thanks. And, and then I'll, I'll strike the match and put it in, in the top yeah. of the pipe and, and hand it to him. Yeah. And at the last moment, he kind of pulls away. Uh, actually, I, I, I should have, I need to, I need to be focused. I... It, it, it seems to me like you're struggling with focus already. I don't suppose this could possibly make that worse. He just shakes his head. I, I appreciate it, but I really, really must, must concentrate. More, more for me, and then he'll take take a couple of puffs and then like casually like blow smoke rings out of uh out of his mouth um and he references the painting are, are they as vivid in your dreams or is this embellishment yeah. in fact if anything i think it's kind of the watered down version of what I see. Do you think, do you think Monet used watered down versions of real life images to make his art? It's a good question, I, hmm. It's just a lens, my friend. Yes, well, all our lenses are different. Rose tinted. <laughs> well, yours might be. Mine's like um stained glass, but not smooth. I think if I could see through it, I would never stop screaming. That's that's where this helps, friend. It wouldn't hurt to laugh once in a while. Hmm. And then he'll he'll do like yeah. a like a, a weird chaotic charming little jig. Yes, yes, good. <laughs> oh, wonderful, good. Um. <laughs> He, I think as you suggest this again, he looks over his shoulder, almost just like a habit toward the uh, slightly opened closet. And he looks back at you. I, I, I really must focus on my work. That, that, yes, I, I, will, I won't push anymore, but is that... Is that a real mountain that you've, is that a place? Or is that just in your, in your brain? I, I suppose it, it. When I, when I dreamt it, um, I had the strangest feeling I've, I've never been, I've never left England, but I had the strangest feeling I was in the plains of Africa. Hmm. Africa. <clears throat> Interesting. I've never been either. Heard great things. Yes, a lot of, uh, a lot of Her Majesty's subjects uh, have been heading over there the last couple years. Hmm. Interesting. Do you know why that is? No, oh, craze with, um, archaeology, I assume. Everybody's uh, 
Zany for Egypt. <laughs> uh, I suppose. Uh, it's always more interesting when you encounter cultures that are different than yours. Hmm. Now, your 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 other paintings, are, do they draw from specific physical places as well, or are all of your paintings from your brain, or do they? Does it feel like you're in a physical place with all of them? Like, are you actually looking upon a, a physical realm? It's it's hard to say. I I always feel like I'm there, but like there's um a veil between, but it's getting thinner. How so? This one, and he points at it, uh, like taps on it even, as he makes an adjustment. I feel as if, when I saw it, I, I almost felt like I could pass right into it. Can you? He? Hmm, he, his eyes dart at you and uh, his ticks come back in full force. No, of course not. Uh, it's just ideas. Um, and so it, the objective for Mickey subtly is like he wants to uh, consume this reefer in very large amounts, but he wants very little of it to go into his lungs. And so the smoke that he's producing, he's, sure. pump, he's pumping out into the room at a very high, like an unusually fast pace. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Not everybody you try to rescue dies. <laughs> Sorry, I just... Really? No, I mean, there are, are a few saved... who have been canonically unrescuable. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> um, You saved Hilton Adams. He was gonna be put to death. Yes, we did. Good job. Uh, yep. Oh, whatever. Whatever. Let's see if he is affected by this or not. Um, you start doing this, and he seems, um, he doesn't really seem to notice what you're doing, but he also doesn't seem as affected. You see the same ticks, um, the same kind of fervor as he focuses back on his work. If there's nothing else, Mr. Mahoney, I really should concentrate i want to get this one finished um oh, yeah yes yes uh there there is something else um i i would like to do another piece on 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 you and your process if you will allow it i just want to this is fascinating to me and i'm sure my readers will enjoy it as well yes, I'm, I'm sure that would make mother very happy um if if you want certainly but uh, I, I can't talk anymore, but I've, I've got to focus on this now. Sure, sure. sure. Um, uh, but yes, one, one more thing. Um, and he uses uh, the pipe to point at his arms. Um, mm -hmm. who, is your, who is your man? Uh, he gulps. Um, is this part of the... So you used to see? I don't know how it's possible for his nerves to increase anymore, but now he's kind of shifting his weight back and forth. Um, and he'll, looks he'll toward the closet a, again. He'll, he'll make a comforting gesture. It, it's, it's okay. I'm, I'm just, I, I as well. So don't don't freak out. I'm not a rat. And then he'll he'll like pull up his sleeve, and then you can see not as not as many, yeah. but like one or two recent. <sighs> Stuff is dangerous. Be careful. I don't know what it's. I don't know what it's called. It just it 
it, it lets me see. Like you were saying. Yes, um, and a few artists I've known on the same path. It affects the tint of the lens, but... This one's all, all green. And then he, he immediately looks to the painting to see what parts of the painting are green. Nothing you can see in the painting except maybe kind of a cast to the sky. How are you with fungi? What? Psilocybin, my friend. Hallucinogenic mushrooms. I don't need to hallucinate anymore, Mr. Mahoney. Usually, um, I see lots of colors, they blend, but at the end of it, I'm happy. It's strange. Something you should look into, at least. I've got some available, if you would like to try. It's got about uh, 45 minutes to an hour before it kicks in, but... Happy. I've got to, I've got to work. It's like, it's weird. It's like your boss is standing in the room next over, just like this dark overlord shouting at you. And <sighs> can't work like that. I can't. I don't know how you do it. He just stares at you. His kind of hollowed in eyes, not blinking. What? Do, do you have a boss? I'm sorry, I'm familiar with the art, I'm unfamiliar with the art industry, per se, but you just work for you, correct? I don't do gallery shows. Oh, so then why, do you, why does it seem like someone's peering over your shoulder? You just... I mean, the prices you're charging, you could live comfortably. What, 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 what is the drive? Why must you finish this? It takes a long time for him to make any kind of answer. He seems almost just frozen. You might. You might be able to understand. Can I show you? Absolutely. He goes over to the closet and grabs that box, that kind of lacquered box. Um, and when he opens it, there's a bit of a... It's very muted, but like a green glow that seems to emanate as it's briefly open and he grabs something. Uh, when he turns around, he has a syringe and inside is a green liquid again, that very muted glowing. Are you going to share? He nods. Show me the process. All right. And he is going to share. So. Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, Mickey only loses one sanity for now. And uh, falls to the floor. <laughs> Let's go downstairs. Uh, 
let's let's start in the parlor. Let's start in the reception room with our group. Uh, how's it going? Y'all talking about anything? Just hanging out? Is it, it's, it's just Irene and I in the and parlor? Zebulon. Is Charlie? Oh, and Zeb, and Charlie is yep. helping to make tea. Yes. Ah, uh, is anyone else getting some real weird vibes around here? Is it just me? I'm, I, I, I do know I'm not feeling very well after seeing some of that art. She has a bit of a, a, dis, a look of distaste on her face, I would say. Mm. I'm, 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 I'm frightened for, for the kind of imagination that, that would lead one to create such things. And then she looks at Irene and, Although perhaps, perhaps I'm just not much of a appreciative of fine art. I don't know. It's a uh, very unique. Um, yes. But uh, no, I. There's something about this place that reminds me of Peru. I was thinking the same thing. In fact, I was, for some reason, that mask came to mind. Do you remember the one that, the one that as you looked into it, gave troubling visions as well? And, and Irene kind of nods. Uh, she's being very cautious about what she says right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and she just kind of, I think she sniffed the air again, again to that weird, it's like she knows that Miles isn't doing great hygiene, hygiene wise, but it wasn't the same smell uh, that right. uh, had been kind of lingering in this house. Uh, this, uh, the uh, smell in this place has been bothering me too. Very, uh, have you ever been to the New York Zoo? No, I haven't. Well, somehow this uh, this house in London smells quite a bit like that. Ah, <sighs> uh, I mean, I I guess I can I, I can see what you mean. Yeah, it's uh. A bit of a funk in the air. Very. It's. Can we go so after this is all done? Can we go somewhere normal? How normal is normal, Zebulon? I don't know. Like Charleston, that's pretty normal. Like that's just. That's I'm... normal to you. I mean, I feel like it's pretty normal, like, in general. I mean, not a lot happens there. There's, like, the shipyard. There's some real interesting buildings. Like, the life moves nice and at a good pace there. <laughs> and, and you know, you know, just... But, I mean, I don't want to go back to Charleston for a vacation. Just... Zebulon, my my mother used to say that that the proof of a well-lived life was often finding yourself wishing you were safe at home on your on your sofa, and that the proof of a poorly lived life was sitting at home safe on your sofa, wishing you were somewhere else. Well, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, I suppose we're living life. Oh, man, I just... This place is weird. This I've just... I've got the bit of the, the heebie-jeebies here. Um, with all this just... But we have seen a great deal of London today. The three hours it took us to drive the mile to this yeah, home. But I, I give did. it a chance. I think you'll find it's lovely. I didn't. I didn't know that that there was three hours of driving in here. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Irene. Well, what? sorry, real quick. Irene, make okay. a make a a no roll. Ooh. I get to know things. Maybe. Uh, education, correct? Yes. Yeah. Extreme. <laughs> As you hear a thump on the floor somewhere above, the, the smell, it finally clicks. Smells like you're in the reptile house. Oh god. Let's go over to the kitchen. Oh no. <laughs> Bertha's making tea. I am helping Excellent. in whatever capacity I can. Cool. Good. I said a thing in our chat and Zoom. Yeah. I feel like I'm going to say it again out mm -hmm. loud that I just feel like a snake is about to climb out of this lady. And if that happens, Lauren, I won't be okay. Oh, that, <laughs> that would be silly. That'd be so silly. That would be if a, silly. If there was a snake controlling this lady, <laughs> it would be silly. It would be, it would be, it would be ridiculous. Anyway. Um, would have been silly if there were werewolves. But there were not. Nope. Just some ghouls. Just some ghouls. Just some ghouls. Um, yeah, so Charlie's being a perfect gentleman, and even though I think he's slowly starting to kind of shake off the heebie-jeebies from looking at all those paintings, <laughs> and I think he's gonna say, so, um, what did you think of your son's work when he got started? It's uh, quite unusual. Uh, some would say disturbing. Oh, I, I suppose so. It's uh, well. Um... Mother has to support her son. Yes, um, I completely agree. I just, um, you must have been surprised that he, he had no formal training, right? Correct. Uh, surprised, uh, most definitely. But in a pleasant way, he uh, seems very happy with his work. Well, uh... As long as you're both happy. Can I vibe check her? Can I? Insulate? You did vibe check last time, um, but I did. Uh, yes. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, right. the kitchen is pretty standard. Uh, there's a door yeah. that opens to the uh, back entrance. Mm. Otherwise, what you would expect, there is another door in here. Mm. Um, that doesn't seem to be like a pantry door. Mm -hmm. And then doors connecting to the rest of the house. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's... He's just kind of looking around, taking it in. Um, and then... Yeah, he's just going to continue to help with the tea. Just making yeah. a mental note of these... You know, all the... You can do your vibe check, though, since you are in a different spot of the house. Okay. And make sure you roll a d10 after. I will. Thank you. Points. Thank you. I will. Success. Look at that. Hard. No, it's not the hard. <laughs> um. Okay. The screams you heard earlier, yeah. the screams of absolute horror, 
Yeah. You can still hear them, but they are much closer now. Can I sense through a door? If I, like, walk over towards one under the guise of helping with something or another? Like, yeah. what a lovely kitchen you have. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. walk over here. <laughs> we can say you helped her, like, set out stuff. And yeah. Then... Yeah. Okay, so you walk over to the door. I'm going to walk over towards where the screams sound louder. Great. Yeah, you walk over to that door. It is locked. Uh, so if you, it doesn't open, but mm. that definitely seems to be the direction. Is there like a keyhole on this side? Yes. Or does it seem locked from the other side? No, there's a keyhole on this side. Okay. <sighs> Do I want to? Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> I love doing dumb shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to bring it up to her or not. I'm not going to. I am going to do dumb shit later, but I'm not going to do it right now. Um, can I, can I see if there seems to be like a set of keys hanging up or does it seem like, has she been jingling in a way that she seems like she has keys on her person? Does she have keys on her person? What? Or does she, does it seem like, is there like a hook with like some jailer keys mm -hmm. like hanging up kind of thing? She does not seem to have a key and there's no key around here. Great, 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 great. But while you were over at the door, <laughs> yeah. you can make a luck roll. Sure. <laughs> I'd love to. Mm -hmm. Do I have any advantages? Let me go take a peek. Take a peek? I guess you can't. Can I, can I use an advantage on a luck roll? Sure. Sure. Okay. I will. <laughs> I'm so lucky. Great. Well, what happened? Does nothing. a snake come out of her mouth? <laughs> okay. Oh my god. I don't trust um, Bertha. Nothing. I'm She's when you Bertha. when you kind of wander back. She is finishing up everything, um, and she has. She's trying to lift the tray herself. Oh, uh, I'll help you with that. And he's gonna go over and pick, take the tray from her. Mm -hmm. Just carry it. Okay, and you head back. Lovely house. <laughs> as you hear a thump from yeah. above. Yeah, I'm keeping my eyes peeled if I see a key around or anything like that, but I got a backup plan. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, she brings the tea in and sets it down and goes about getting paperwork. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, Charlie's gonna, um, he's gonna say, do you have a, do you have a pen? You saying that to Bertha? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Charlie definitely has a pen, but he's, he wants Bertha to go away for a second. Yeah. Uh, yes, of course, dear. It would be, uh, she looks around, you are in the reception room, so she's looking around here for a pen. can make a luck check for her if you want. <laughs> you can make a luck check? Yeah, see if yeah. she finds a pen. Yeah. Her, oh. Do bad. Is her luck great? Yeah. Shut up. Uh, she finds a pen. Fuck. I'm gonna oh, take lady. it, I'm gonna chuck it right at her head. <laughs> Come here, snake. Um, yep, he's gonna take it, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's going to start filling out the paperwork and then right. he's going to give a look at the others that I need to talk to them. Get Bertha out of the room. <laughs> uh, great. You would all know that Charlie has a pen. Like, he's a man of, he's a man of class and refinement. Uh huh. <laughs> so it was weird for him to ask her to go get a fucking pen. <laughs> mm. 
Do <laughs> now this um we are all intimately familiar with each other, so yeah, and, and I think Zeb's Zeb's got the Zeb's got the quick witted mm -hmm. thing. I think he's able to put this together. Um, <laughs> You're so smart. Think, Zeb. Uh, <laughs> it's less about smarts and more about um, catching on, just catching, catching on to things. Yeah. Um, let's see, was there like a garden in front of this place? Uh, there's a bit of a kind of backyard out back um, that's walled in, and out front it's pretty barren. All right. Is there anything out back? Is there like a garden? I know they love their gardens over in, over in England. Is there a vegetable garden? <laughs> What's going on out there? Uh, you haven't been out back. There's uh, a small yard as described. Maybe uh, while I'm finishing up this paperwork, uh, Zeb, you could help um, our lovely host uh, wrap up those paintings. Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, I, I suppose I could do that. Uh, oh, my, um, no. Uh, Miles likes to do that himself. Uh, bitch. <laughs> of course. Um... Well, now, um, Miss, uh, now, now, is Charlie giving the look that you want her out of the room? Okay. This is his second attempt in okay. literally like gotcha. two minutes gotcha. to get her out of the um, room. <laughs> now, uh, but not the kitchen. I'm gonna sneak in there. Now, Miss, uh, Miss Shipley, um, I am a, uh, a journalist as well, and that's sort of how I've met up with uh, Mr. Mahone, a uh, sort of a advisor of mine, uh, sent me over here to learn a little bit from him. And now he's done uh, bits and pieces about your son, correct? Oh, yes, yes. Um, uh, they, I mean, Mr. Mahone was the only one that, um, that, uh, Miles really um, spoke well, to I'd, as far as journalists I'd, go. I'd love to get sort of a more in-depth, another sort of uh, side to that to that piece. You know, one a more personal one. The only the the sort of the side of the story that only the uh, mother can tell about her son. Uh, I'm sure my my uh, my ma would. Uh, <laughs> Well, her stories uh, about me and growing up would be quite interesting. Um, I was wondering if you'd be interested in sort of sharing your side, and perhaps I could also do a uh, a picture for you. I do a bit of photo uh, photo work with my journalism. Oh, there's no no one would be interested in me. Miles is the star of the show. But everyone wants to know more about the person, but not from the person that's why whenever we go out and interview people we go out and interview the people around them it's important to know what they're like from those who are in their lives it's uh it's the things that people want to know they they you know it helps you know it helps make it helps make whoever they're interviewing more real right when you know the people they're connecting when you see their connections to other people yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she, oh, it sounds makes a lot of sense when you put it like that. Um, I uh, are, are you sure a picture though? I'm. I'm in I don't my have house to do a picture. Stress. I'm just right. wondering if you're. Yeah. So if you're just. Um, do you mind if we step outside? I'm just feeling a bit cramped in here. All of you make power checks. <laughs> Absolutely. Get this snake out of this house. Oh, I'm using a fucking advantage, and I don't care who How knows How many it. do you have left? Aren't you almost done? I have one, so, ma'am, yeah. let me do what I will. Hard success. I have one left. I'm also going to use my last advantage. Okay. Hey, Which, chat. Uh, wink, wink. Hint, me and Tommy hint, are wink, out wink. of advantages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's you too. <laughs> That's because, because we are liberal with our advantage use. 
because we care. Oh, extreme success. Holy shit. Yeah, I I, success. Thank God for that advantage. Seriously. I have the strong-willed, I have the strong-willed yep. uh, pulp talent, so I get automatic advantage Same on these things. Oh my thank God. Thank God. <laughs> thank God you do. And I'm wow. Green. Yeah, I've got the same strong-willed, so. so. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> we were all on two sides of me. the dice. <laughs> Got a heart, really though, so whatever. I can't uh, wait for this snake to pop out of this body. Sorry, when I said my rolls are like this, my rolls are like this, and then there's just like the slate <laughs> right at the end. Just yeah. the occasional. <laughs> Nothing in the so, middle. So, yeah. Charlie is the only one who got a hard. The rest of you got extremes. Do I need a extreme? <laughs> uh, Ma'am. Uh, don't be obvious about it. Uh, certainly, certainly. I um... hate you. <laughs> no, I love you. <laughs> uh, certainly. Um, if uh, should should we fetch Miles? Uh, no, I I find that it's 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 best to to do so without your others around. Um, the the readers they want, you know, your un um, filtered sort of story you know my ma you know if my if i if you know when whenever my ma starts telling stories around the dinner table she starts telling all them embarrassing stories about me as a kid and i just get all flushed and you know i try to tell her not to do it you know I, you know i wouldn't want miles to feel embarrassed by you know did he did you ever put him in dresses you know tea you know tea parties when he was a kid like you know the things that are just harmless but you know all of us sons we get real embarrassed when our parents start telling stories C certainly certainly um well uh, are you sure you don't want to just do this right here we have the tea set up uh i mean i i i, I just uh i need the fresh air to sort of get my my questions rolling um uh all right uh it's just, it's just a it's just a little stuffy in here for me i I, I grew up in i grew up uh being outside a lot and so that's where i find i do my best best work certainly follow me and katie says give my whiny baby summer two advantages thank you <laughs> <laughs> i'm a whiny baby um yeah and i think as they leave yeah. charlie kind of like sighs and i think had leaned back like into his chair and is like thank god and <laughs> will take a sip of his tea lauren Okay. A drink of relief, if you will. Yep. Okay. You happy? I'm ecstatic, Summer. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you're hydrated. Um, okay, so Bertha and Zebulon are headed out back. Uh, Irene and Ganymede. I will leave you for just a moment. And I'm going to hop up to our dear friend, Mickey Mahoney. What's happening? So you're on the floor. <clears throat> common, common. Mm -hmm. You're, uh, if anybody was up to see you, I did mention a thumb, but nobody cared. Um, I care though, and Miles does care. <laughs> um, he, uh, the last bits you see of him is him like stuffing some like dirty clothes under your head to make sure that like you're okay and you're breathing and all that. Um, and your eyes roll back in your head and in front of you, It's dusk, suddenly. There's sand everywhere. But that's all <laughs> second, because in front of you is a great pyramid. One that you would easily recognize just from the papers. One of three. And 
smaller but closer to you. You see five figures. Uh, in this dim light, you can still tell they seem to be Westerners. They're dressed in Western clothing. But a little out of date, like a little, oh, I don't know, like six years ago. Your vision moves again. And this time you and these people are winding through tunnels. Uh, tunnels, you're, you're not sure where, but the air is different wherever you are. The pressure. And finally, uh, you stand in a great black throne room with a, an ornate throne in the center. And there's a figure there. A figure with... He's strangely beautiful. Uh, he looks perhaps Egyptian, but not quite. It's, it's hard to specify, and his eyes are a brilliant green. And he seems to be talking to these people, but it's, it's hard to make out. It's like that veil, right? That veil that he described, except the way it makes sound is like you're listening through water. And the five Westerners disappear. And there is only this man. And now looking closer at him, he's in the garb of a pharaoh. And he fades, but just before he does, his green eyes seem to look directly into yours. Make a sanity check. You only lose three sanity. <sighs> Again, your vision moves and you are back out front with the Westerners, but this time this time the pyramids aren't complete. They are being built. And this is where Mickey will be for two hours, if not interrupted. Also, you can add two points to your Cthulhu Mythos score. Cool. So, outside. Zeb and Bertha having a chat. Best fucking friends in right, the So what does the outside look like? Is there at least like a little place we can sit? Uh, sure. We'll say there's a little bench out here. It is surrounded by uh, nine foot tall walls, but there is a gate like a, that right. opens onto like the back street. All right. Um, well, then... Uh, um... And Zeb will get out. He, he always keeps a little notepad on him for, you know, articles and stuff like that. He's just going to whip that out. Um, and the pen, because Zeb also always has a pen on him. <laughs> um, which Charles probably knows as well. Uh, which everyone in the group knows. Um, and he's just going to sort of uh, write down the date. And uh, he's just say, um, all right, for uh, just start off, if I could just... Uh, um, for the record, uh, uh, get your full name. Uh, uh, Bertha Elaine Shipley. Uh, Bertha Elaine Shipley. That is a, a, uh, 
a very lovely name. Um, now, uh, um, is my my when I was younger, my my parents called me Bess. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> um. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I understand that. I mean, my all my sisters have uh, long names, but I always call them something shorter. Uh, um, my sister, uh, uh, Annabelle, goes by Anna. I go by Zeb. Um, it's always nice to sort of have a short name that only those of you close to you call you. Now, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Shipley, uh, how would you describe your son? Oh, he's a, he's, he's a good boy. <laughs> uh, ta- maybe works a bit too hard. Of course, of course. That's always, uh. I'm sure a, a great concern for uh, uh, any caring mother. Uh, Indeed. <laughs> um, what was he like growing up? Um. Well. Uh, much more carefree, but uh, directionless, I guess you could say. can certainly understand that uh um i'm actually uh i'm the uh i'm the uh the fifth of seven children in my family uh the only boy and i can understand i can understand uh certainly trying to figure out what you what you're gonna do um (laughs) You say directionless, so he wasn't always uh, such an amazing uh, artist. Uh, no, I, I didn't even really know of his interest, but um, he didn't have much interest in anything. But I, I did know that he had a kind of knack for it. Uh, when would you say he really came into his own in this whole thing? When, when you, when you. Like knew the moment that that he was uh, meant for something amazing. Well, I suppose with the uh, the first painting, uh, or rather the one that uh, got the most uh, coverage, that um, that one, no, the the ancient Egyptian one. I think uh, I think I remember hearing about that one. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, though. Um, the Dark Pharaoh. The Dark Pharaoh. Pharaoh of Darkness? The Dark Pharaoh? Dark Pharaoh? I don't know. I feel like I've heard that name somewhere before. Um, <laughs> now, what about yourself? Before Miles... Uh, was there a, a, a Mr. Shipley? Oh, yes, but he, he uh, died a few years ago. He passed on. I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure you'd be very proud of where you're all at, where y'all are at now. Make a uh, make a power check. Oh boy! Oh. For no it's reason. Okay. Oh, boy. For no reason. No reason at all. Why does my thing keep scrolling up? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh yes. Nice. Uh-huh. Just doing math. Uh-huh. All right. All right. 
And, um... What would you say, sort of... Now, I know that you mostly handle business um, in all this. Uh, would you say you have any other role in Miles's career? Perhaps his inspiration? Perhaps as sort of his motivating force here? I know all artists have their, their uh, reason for uh, doing what they do. No, um, I really don't know where he gets his ideas from. And, uh, just pure, pure creation. I mean, I've, there's always tale of, uh, there was talk about divine inspiration in the church and, uh, that my family's a part of. You know, they speak about how, uh, many, uh, writers of the of the of the uh, good book how they were divinely inspired by god and uh, perhaps your son is uh one of those folks getting divine inspiration <laughs> perhaps <laughs> that's not sus at all <laughs> no not at all i hated that <laughs> laugh that giggle was that was perfect Let's make one more power check. Oh my god, it's Lauren. <laughs> um, oh, is it, everyone? Is, it, is, it, is it possible to swap over someone else real quick? Because I've got a garbage truck running by right outside. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Uh, cut over go. me, Lauren. <laughs> yeah, I would I would love to cut over to you. Is uh, that power checks for everyone or just for... Just for Tommy. Got it. When you're in, when you're in full view of a snake, you got to roll that power check. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to run. I'm going to quickly get up. So I I basically shoot my teeth. I get up. I put the paperwork to the side and I look at Ganymede and Irene and I say, if she comes back, cover for me. And I'm going to go back into the kitchen. <sighs> Great. And over to the door. Mhm. Mm and I'm going to fucking Bust it open! <laughs> okay. Um, you can make a strength if you'd like. It will be at disadvantage. At disadvantage? Yeah, you're Can I use my advantage woozy. to counter it? Sure. <laughs> okay. Here I go. I'll use two points of luck. <laughs> sure. <sighs> Uh, you start on that. Um, yeah. It's not like the heftiest door, but you're not being quiet either. No, I don't care and, about quietness. Um, okay. Can we see this from from where we're from where yes, we are in actually the parlor? Yes, actually, and you definitely hear it. Yeah, Ganymede is definitely up immediately and yeah. <laughs> very fast, coming over very fast. Charles, what in the world are you doing? I can hear something down here. Uh, screaming. And you said I feel woozy, right? Yep. Yeah, he just says, I think as he's kind of, he like loses his footing for a second as he's like trying to bust open the door. And he just, uh, he's, he's like, fuck, under his breath. And uh, he looks over towards Irene, who is the closest to the T, and says, don't drink the tea. Yes. Um, Several we may not have very later, long. <laughs> after the tea was served. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, how many cups have been poured of this tea? One for everyone, I would assume. Yeah. Uh, I'm pouring uh, them into the kitchen sink. Okay. Make it look like we drank them, but we didn't. Okay, the kitchen does have a window that looks out into the garden. Can, can we, can, is there a lock on the door that leads out to the garden? Yeah. Lock the door. <laughs> but, but, Zeb is, is 
is He's out He's a big boy. He you, can handle himself. Do you, do you suspect... Do you suspect Mrs. Shipley? She seems harmless. Yeah, she seems harmless, but she put something in that fucking tea. You saw her? I didn't see her do it, but I'm not feeling very well. Ah. The door? Is that what our is that what our power checks have been for? Cuz I if the tea had been sitting there for minutes, I'm sure that's um I'm sure I would have partaken. I'm just curious. Maybe maybe not. Yeah. That's not what the power checks were for. If okay. you drank the tea, if you'd like to be fair, you can tell me if you did. I asked yeah, for I'm it sure. not to be made obvious when I was whispering. I'm sure, I'm sure I would have okay. done so. Okay. Um, so to see, uh, what about you, Irene? Doesn't. No, she wouldn't have. She's... Okay. <laughs> She'd been around too many, like, she had a pass with the mob. She knows not to drink things unless you 100% know the person. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, so Ganymede and Charles need you both to make con checks at this point. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hard success. Nice. Um, I don't think I'm going to use an advantage. Totally fine. Okay. So you've got the door open. It. I mean, it's not like Charles smashed it to smithereens, so uh, it looks like outside that Bertha's still talking to Zebulon. Uh, wh where does the... Is it like a hall? Is it a room? Uh, it's a staircase that goes down. Charlie just looks down the stairs is the screaming louder um are you actively vibe checking uh yeah i will go ahead okay success uh yes fuck there's there's definitely screaming coming from down there I'm I have to look does the smell increase with yes. the door opening okay uh, I think Irene at this point is going to bring up the uh, the smell uh, I think I'm... it smells like the reptile house at the zoo like um, where the lizards and snakes are kept Sure. Yeah, she's kind of like sniffing the air again and kind of like. Yeah. She seems sure of herself with saying that, but she's still confused by it. We'll be careful. We'll be quick. That, and Ganymede it sort of reaches over her shoulder, and you can hear that hollow snap sound as the, the case that she carries her weapon in opens, and she draws out the shotgun boarding axe and loads two shells charles you're in i don't think you're in any condition to let me go check i'm not gonna let you go by yourself at this point ganny you're starting to feel woozy and charles you're starting to not be able to stay on your feet yeah uh, at this point i think i may just like i i think we should come back later There's, there's no guarantee that we'll be able to I, come back later, and, and there's no guarantee that we'll be able to get back inside. Whatever is that, it's likely awake and aware. <sighs> uh, she's kind of looking up towards... Uh, Miles' room, like even if it's just kind of like through the floors, kind of deal. Like she's she's 
not really looking down the stairs. Mm hmm. <laughs> and Ganymede shakes her head. Is it like, is it nausea? Is it dizziness or it's, wooziness? It's, or? it's like you feel like you want to pass out or sleep. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I I think that might be, that might be a good idea. Irene, uh, I think it's beginning to affect me too. Yeah, I think Charlie's like steadying himself on the kitchen counter, like really having to like hold himself up. And he goes, uh, then maybe we should get, maybe we should get Mickey and go. Uh, I think so. Um, if you're not feeling well, that's a good excuse. Um, I'm gonna go check. And, and I mean, it's kind of already backing away towards like the stairs. Uh, uh, to to head upstairs. Okay. Yeah, when you get upstairs, uh, the Miles's door is locked. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Irene probably tries the door. Yeah. And then she'll she'll knock. Um, Mr. Mahoney, uh, Miles, everything all right in there? After a few moments, you hear, are you alone? Right now, yes. Uh, my companions aren't feeling well, and your mother is uh, outside with one of my other companions. He uh, very quickly kind of opens the door just a bit, not enough to see inside. Yeah. I said to come back later tonight. Why haven't you left yet? They were filling out paperwork. Uh, and and uh, one of my friends uh, wanted to do an interview with your mother uh, and went out into the gardens. Um, is, is Mr. Mahoney there still? Yes. Um, he... He wanted to finish our interview. He might be here for some time just wanted to um, know more about the process. Um, alright. Um. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure he gets on his way. I'll, I'll do my best. Would you, um, maybe send a message? Uh, and and she'll, she'll kind of like pull out paper and, uh -huh. and, and write the, the, the hotel telephone. Um, just to the reception, not to the actual room or anything. Right. Uh, just to let him know where he's. Of course. On his way. Um, we'll be back later. Good. Um, and Irene just kind of. Uh. I think she she's hesitant to leave. Sure. Uh, but uh is is he in the basement? What else? He f furrows his brow and looks concerned, confused. No. No. I know this is uh, maybe something that you have to tell me later, but what is on the lower floors? It's the basement. It's just storage. Does he look under the influence of anything when he's responding to this? Um, this would be a psychology, not a spot hidden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna use an advantage because I'm not great at this. <laughs> Do -ba -do -ba -do. Where is that? Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, he looks much the same as before. Okay. 
sorry, it just smells odd. All right, well, um, hopefully I'll see you tonight. Did I remember if there's a window looking out in his room or is it in an interior room? Uh, there is a window looking out toward the front of the house. Okay. Um, I'll be outside. Um, if you'll be able to see me through the window, likely. I'll, 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 I'll arrive uh, across the street just to look less suspicious. All right. Um, and, and she kind of, if you see my friends with me, uh, they can be trusted with something like this. We've more, more people means more noise. Right. Um, but just in case, I, I don't want you to be scared off if they're also with me. I can't promise that I'll be completely alone. He nods and will go to shut the door. Okay! And Irene just kind of casually, I think, probably stand there for like 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Before you, she finally... um, I think you hear a chair pulled across the floor and propped under the doorknob. Oh, great. Love that. Uh, yeah, she'll kind of just start walking away and down to her friends who she's pretty concerned about because they look like they're about to pass the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, um, when you go downstairs, um, Charles is not going to be able to walk out if you're unassisted and Ganny is going in the same direction. Okay. Yeah, Irene is like, and we're going and she's, she's going to help um, them mm -hmm. out uh, even if it's just to the front. Mm -hmm. uh, and like two steps, uh, there's the car there, which means one of us looks like Irene's gonna have to fucking drive. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think she, she's gonna um, start to kind of head towards where Zeb is. Okay, before you get there, hey bud, um, make a power check. Zebulon making a power check. Give me the roll. I believe in you. Is it not going through, Tommy? Tommy! Oh, sorry, I thought you were talking to Kiana. Um, I made my power roll earlier. Is this another one? Yep. Okay. Nice. Oh, there we go. Very good. You still can't move or speak, but something else didn't work. And... Oh, <laughs> nice for me. Um, great. So, yeah. Uh, Irene, when you go out, it looks like Bertha's just kind of happily talking to Zeb, who's just staring very intently at her. Okay. Uh, I think Irene just called her. Um, I excuse me. Oh, yes, dear. Did Zebulon respond at all? Nope. Oil can. Oil can. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. No, that doesn't respond. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think I think that would be kind of weird for, for Irene to sure. kind of be like, that's, that's weird. That he doesn't respond. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Uh, Rapp and, and, and Miss Gray were, are not feeling well. Oh, um, dear. Of departing. Uh, uh Zebulon? He doesn't move. Yep. 
I mean, slowly starts to walk over. Uh, Zebulon, we should be get going too. Uh. <laughs> are you I, I, are you next to them? Uh, she's getting closer. Okay. Um, and I think uh, her hand is a uh, hand's going into a bag <laughs> where the gun is. Okay then. <laughs> sure. She. Zebulon doesn't not talk. Like, if all the time that she's been <laughs> with Zebulon, Zebulon's a talker. And mm -hmm. she is finding it extremely weird that he is not responding. Sure. Um, so she is getting she is getting closer. And I think it's very casual. I, I, I don't think it's like a don't look at me as I put my hand in my purse. It's like a, oh, uh, I'm, I'm searching for the car keys. Or I'm like, mm -hmm. um, I'm rifling through for something else. Yeah. Uh, she stands up and starts walking towards you then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for having us, uh, Mrs. Shipley. Um, um, sorry, I don't, I don't think uh, Mr. Rapp was able to finish the paperwork before he uh, felt ill, but we can return if you would like to, to, to fill that out. Oh. Yes, I'm, I'm sure that can be arranged. And she's like standing right in front of you, kind of uh -huh. blocking your way to Zeb. Mm, I don't like that. <laughs> um, if I may, and she, she's going to try to sidestep and see just how like, mm -hmm. how in the way she's trying to be. Yeah. As you sidestep, uh, her hand flashes out at you. Oh, okay. That's a success. Great. Would you like to do anything? Would you like to dodge or anything like yes, that? Yes, I'm gonna try to dodge. Okay. Jeez. Uh, yeah, we're doing that and we're using an advantage because I have those. That's a success. Nice. <laughs> It. They're both regular, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you. Yeah. Uh. Oh, I'm I'm so sorry, dear. No, of course. So um... sorry. <laughs> and she... Gotta fuck off. <laughs> swings back again to jab at you with what you can now see is a knitting needle. Oh, fuck off. Success. Uh, you can dodge. You will lose your turn again. I'm tempted to just take this and to shoot her. Uh, so I'm just going to take it. I have time for HP. Okay. It's the fucking middle of the day. <laughs> <laughs> yup. And there are nine foot walls, as previously described. Okay, so the initial damage is two. Okay. And then you need to make a con check. All right. Uh, we're using advantage on this again. I have so many to burn. This is a great moment to use them. Uh, that's a normal success. Well, I'm so sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Take eight more points of damage right. as something goes into your veins. And inside, Charles is unconscious. And that's where we're going to end today's episode. Fuck. Ah! Ah! Not again. It's <laughs> 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 always me. I always get stuck. I swear to God, the, the fucking... Are like identical too. Okay, that's that's about as evil of a GM as I've ever been, and I don't like it. Uh, let's go around and talk to everybody, please, God. Uh, and let's start with Billy, who's having a really fun trip to ancient Egypt. <laughs> yeah, uh, and listen, airfare was free, so winning wasn't. Yeah, w hashtag winning. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, this was this was this was super fun because we're getting into the meat of it now, yeah. and uh, this is a blast. I'm having a hoot. Uh, everybody at this table is dope. Follow them. 
Uh, so open your ears, pay attention to what their social medias at, are, and just do what they do what they ask you to do. Um, I mean, not so much, but if you like internet stuff, I'm Bill of the Forest. Uh, if you don't, um, round of applause for you. You have uh, uh, conquered the evil of this era of time. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, love it, love it, love it. Cannot wait to see what happens. Um, uh, that's it. Thank you, Lauren. Yay. And let's go over to my good friend, Tommy. Not again. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Not again. Um, as I've stated in our uh, back of room chat here, I, for one, welcome our reptilian overlords. <laughs> Um, and, um, you know, as long as I'm not paralyzed again. Um, yes. Hello. Hi. That was amazing. That was a great and scary end. Um, and I'm ready for Irene just to straight up murk an old lady. Um, <laughs> what is this? um, Let's see. I am Tommy at Imperator to Pingo on the Twitter sphere. I do tabletop RPG stuff and video editing stuff across the interweb, such as the intro for this show. Um, other than here on Saturdays, you can find me over on Encounter Roleplay on Fridays at 6 p.m. Eastern, running Eclipse, an Urban Shadows campaign set in L.A. And we're coming up on our penultimate episode, and things are spicy. Very, very, very spicy. Okay, let's hop up to Summer. How you doing? You know, you know me. Um... Yeah. I'm doing great. Uh, Charlie's unconscious yet again. I literally hope he dies finally so I can escape this hell. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, this is so fun. Uh, but you can find me on Twitter at just a summer job. That's where I tweet and retweet about everything that I've got going on. Um, obviously, you can find me here every Saturday. You can find me um, at various times throughout the week on off the table. That's off underscore the table uh, where we're playing masks. We're playing glitter hearts. We've got a uh, we've got a monster of the week campaign. We've got quest. We've got urban shadows. We've got it all. Um, well, not all of it, but a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's all for me. Cool. And let's hop over to Allie. Hey. Hey, baby. Um, oh my God. Oh my God. That was so, so good. Um, love so much getting to, uh, to play in this pretend apocalypse with a uh, very good friends. It takes my mind off the actual apocalypse that's happening. Literally looking at orange sky out my window, uh, yeah. right here. Um, so good. I just want to mention very quickly, there was a point earlier today where I dropped an end card. If you're not familiar with the with what the end card is, it's basically uh, your the, the sign, the symbol that says, hey, I'm not super comfortable with this. I'm okay now, but maybe we could uh, fade on. It, had, it was in the scene uh, that was uh, really kind of focusing in on Miles Shipley's addiction issues. Um, and didn't know that it would be a deal for me until it happens. Sometimes that happens, right? Um, but just um, wanted to put out like a super big thumbs up for the end card um, because it made me feel incredibly safe and cared for and for my fellow players and especially Lauren and uh, Billy who saw it and were like, yep, got it. And, uh, and, and adjusted the scene in a way that was just right for me. So if you've never used safety tools before, um, you should really give it a try, give it a look. Uh, it made today's game really, really good for me. Um, and potentially it might not have been because it triggered some weird stuff. So anyway, just putting out a, um, uh, a vote of confidence for that, check it out. You can find me on Twitter at Allison Robinson with Tells and Why. Catch me here on the channel doing this uh, whenever I have the opportunity. Can't wait until next week. Bye all. Awesome. Uh, Kiana, how you doing? Good. Uh, I'm going to shoot an old lady uh, next episode, so that's great. Sure you are. Uh, I'm going to try to shoot an old lady then. <laughs> uh, and I have five advantages still, so we're just going to burn those to sure. shoot an old lady. Uh, <laughs> great. Fine. Uh, definitely don't take that out of context whatsoever. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Also, thank you, Raiders. Uh, we're actually just wrapping up here today, uh, <laughs> but stick around because we're going to go raid some friends. So go share the loves elsewhere. Uh, but you can find me over on Twitter at Kiana S, the best way that I'm doing. Uh, when I'm not here on the channel, I'm over just here on the channel with my best friend, Lauren. Uh, I am the GM uh, for Burn Bright uh, series uh, called Against the Stars, which is on Tuesdays. If you like science fantasy uh, and uh, characters getting into trouble, uh, that's definitely the place to be. Uh, what about you, Lauren? I'm Lauren, I'm that salty ginger over on Twitter. You can find me here every Saturday uh, through Tuesday. Uh, I also have some Bluebirds Brides uh, tickets up for sale. I'm a GM with Magpie and their curated play program. So if you want to play those, those are on sale. They're up in chat. Uh, super fun feminine horror game. That's it for me. Thank you to our sponsors again. Thank you, Roll20, Dice, Envy, and Grinding Coffee Co. Um, if you ever want to catch up on an, up on an episode, we put them on our YouTube. And I think that glitch with VODs was all fixed, so we're up to date. Yeah, we're just getting uh, getting some of those episodes back on the Twitch because... Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you want to know when we go live, come follow us on Twitter. We're like close to a thousand followers over there, which is cool. Uh, and I think that's, that's really it. We'll be back tomorrow at 8 a.m. Pacific. We're going to go raid some friends, so if you want to send some hype... If you have that emote uh, from us or some hearts with love from us here at Salty Sweet Games. Otherwise, we are going to head out. All See right. you next week. See you next week. Wait, bye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.